Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our midweek refill, which we call our Bible studies. Most of us know it as Bible studies. Um, for those of you joining us for the first time, we are streaming live from World Outreach Church, World Outreach Church for All Nations. And for our brethren who are at home, we want you to tune in with us right now, turn on your internet and log in and begin to, you know, fellowship with us. If you're cooking, we want you to still log in and fellowship with us. Hallelujah. Whatever you are doing, you can still log in and have fellowship with us. For our fellowship is with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and with one another. Even though we are not physically together, but we can worship together in the Spirit. Hallelujah. We give God praise. We thank God for His faithfulness. We thank Him for His mercies. For we have confidence in Him that whenever we call on Him, He will answer us. Whatever time, whatever place you are, He will answer us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let us come together and begin to give God praise because He deserves our worship. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together and rejoice in the God of our salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. See? 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And you are beautiful beyond description. To marvelous for words. You are so wonderful.
Hallelujah. Mic check one. There we go. <laughs> ah, we just serve an awesome God. I, I don't know what it is that the praise and worship team was eating today. I, they just was on a whole nother level. And so we just give God all the praise and all the glory for what he is doing through our praise and worship team. Thank you guys so much. That was such an awesome time of worship. And, you know, this if it's not for um, just being at the very throne of God and just glorifying him, just giving him all the all the praise and all the honor, this this whole thing would just be pointless. Everything that we that we're doing would just be pointless if it's not about glorifying the God that we serve. So. Uh, so I just thank God, you know, I thank God for being a part of such an awesome ministry, you know, um, you know, for for a church of our size, when we compare, you know, our size to a lot of the sizes that are out there, we do an amazing, uh, we do some amazing things. We really do some amazing things. You know, sometimes, you know, you walk into the sanctuary, it don't look like it, but we do some amazing things. And we just thank God for what he's doing through us. We thank God for just his hand on our set man uh, and our father in the house, Pastor Bank, and, and also his lovely wife, um, Pastor Sharon. They are awesome, awesome servants. And what God has deposited in them, it will go for generations and many generations and many generations to come. And so we thank God for what he's doing through our, um, through our parents and the Lord. Um, if you will, let's turn to 1 Chronicles chapter 29. And we're going to, our text for the day will be 1 Chronicles chapter 29. We're going to look from verses 10 to 17. 1 Chronicles chapter 29 verses 10 through 17. And um, we're just basically briefly just continuing on this series of financial freedom. As you know, this Sunday that is coming up will be the finale of this series. Um, and so we're just going to just rehash or touch on some things that, um, that we did touch on Sunday. And we just hope that that the message tonight will be a blessing to you. And, um, and then we're just going to cap it off with just a short time of prayer. First Chronicles chapter 29, verses 10. Um, as it reads, it says, and I'm reading from the NASB, which is my preferred text. I know everybody else has their own, but my f- preferred text is the NASB. <laughs> and uh, verse 10, it says, so David... Bless Yahweh in the sight of all the assembly. And David said, Blessed are you, Yahweh, God of Israel, our Father forever and ever. Verse 11, Yours, Yahweh, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Indeed, everything that is in in the heavens and on earth, yours is the dominion. Yahweh and you, Exalt yourself as head over all. Verse 12, both riches and honor come from you and you rule over all and in your hand is power and might and it lies in your hand to make great and to strengthen everyone. Verse 13, now therefore our God, we thank you and we praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer as generously as this? For all things come from you and from your hand and we have given to you. Verse 15, for we are strangers before you in temporary residence as all our fathers were. Our days on the earth are like a shadow and there is no hope. Yahweh, our God. All this abundance that we have that we have provided to build you a house for your holy name, it is from your hand, and everything is yours. Amen. See, I didn't I didn't grow up as a Christian. For the first 12 years of my life, my father was not an active believer in any church. My mother was an active churchgoer, but she was not a a member of any church. And so we visited a lot of churches, but we were never really committed 
to fellowshipping with one. I, I could remember attending this one church in Atlanta when I was 11 years old and it was this Presbyterian church and, and the one thing that I could remember was my reaction around offering time. In, in this church, they had this thing, you know, the offering plate. You know, we would all be seated in our respective aisles and our respective roles. And, and I would remember during offering time, they would pass the plate from one side of or, or one side of the aisle to the next to the to the opposite side of the aisle. The the plate would just come by. You know, and so you know, everybody had an opportunity to touch the plate. It was kind of like this awkward but really cool time in the service because you've seen the plate go from one person to the next person. And when it got to you, you could probably see like how much money was, plate, it was put inside the offering plate and then it would be passed on to the next person and passed on to the next person. And my thoughts as I can remember was why are people putting money inside the collection plate? Mind you, our family did not have a lot of money at this time, and, and no one ever spoke to us about money management, and so I had a somewhat negative reaction, a disdain, if you will, to see people put money inside of a collection plate, because I didn't understand what it was all about. I, I say that to say that that without training, instruction, or understanding, I had a perspective about money that was based on deeply held internal beliefs that was informed by what I understood from seeing my mother and my father. My parents worked and earned paychecks that could pay bills. My parents were very hard workers. My parents would tell me that one day I would go to work, which translated to me one day paying bills eventually. <laughs> What I, could, what I could not remember was my parents ever telling me that money was earned, for, that the money that we earned from laboring was a means of enjoyment or a means to building up the kingdom of God. My parents never told me about the purpose of money other than paying bills and taking care of the family. And because my parents were not committed to discipleship by any church, I did not know that God was involved in our monetary transactions. My mindset towards money as of 2021, have, as of 2021 has been framed largely by what I have seen from my parents growing up. I saw having money as a means to avoid living on the street but not involved but not involving God and his kingdom. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because many of us today need to renew our minds concerning how we view money. As a church, we have a responsibility of ensuring that every generation, including high school and college students, uh, that including high school and college students, understand how to engage money as well as, as disciples of World Outreach Church for All Nations. The text that we read from in, in 1 Chronicles chapter 29 shows King David, the one who got placed over Israel, acknowledging before all the people that everything that they have as a nation, whether it be land, whether it be riches, wealth, their victories over their enemies, or whatever, uh, whatever that, all, that all those things came from Yahweh. In verse 12, David says, both riches and honor, they come from you. In verse 14, he says, for all things come from you. And just so if you forgot, <laughs> verse 16, it is from your hand and everything is yours. David is, is, is making it perfectly clear in his praise and declaration towards Yahweh that he is under no illusion that he earned anything. Even though David physically fought the battles and, and plundered the enemies, even though David was an excellent military strategist known for killing Goliath at, at a young age, David knows that he didn't own any of the glory because David had a theocentric or God-centered view of his wealth and accomplishments. He understood that he was just a steward of God's resources. 
Some of us struggle in this area of stewardship because we do not have a, a God-centered view of our wealth and accomplishments. As high schoolers and, and college students, we cannot afford to we we cannot afford to have a misunderstanding of what God has given us. Some of uh, some of you grew up with well-to-do parents. Your parents had a lot of had a, a, a lot of money. You, whenever you had a need, whenever you had a want, your parents were able to, to, to provide towards those needs, provide towards they want, they, towards those wants. They gave you everything that you ever wanted, and so you have a sense of entitlement that has been built. You know, I was talking to uh, a sister of mine on, on, on Friday, and she was telling me how, you know, her daughter, when they go to certain houses, she looks at the, the size of the house that, that they're visiting, you know, and she compares the size of the house that they're visiting to the size of the house that they live in. And, you know, based on comparison, if that house was smaller than their house, she had a certain attitude towards, you know, the, 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 the status of the people who may have lived in this, in this house. Or if the house was bigger than their house, you know, she would marvel like, wow, this is such a big house. Like, man, you know, are we, are, are, are we poor? <laughs> do we, do we, you know, she compared, you know, everything based on a sense of entitlement. She didn't, she doesn't understand what it means to work hard. She doesn't understand what it means to, to earn money. She's entitled because she's grown up with, in, you know, in a household that is well to do. And so as a result, you know, some of us never had to work a budget because you just believe that that money, that money is going to come. Money is going to fall from heaven. You just ask and money is available. That sense of entitlement that some of us have because of the, 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 the well-established households that we grew up in. And then there's the other extreme where you worked hard for everything that you had in life that you feel like you don't owe God any praise or any glory. It was, it was your smarts, it was, it was your grades, it was your working hard, your sleepless nights, all the things that you did to accomplish this because God didn't do any of this. I did this, God didn't do this. You know, I lift myself up by my own bootstraps. Both extremes reflect a sense of arrogance, and ignorance. This whole issue about financial freedom is, is really an issue of the mind. It's a, it's a paradigm problem. If, I, if I'm submitted to Christ in my, in my thinking, then that governs how I deal with money. Because how I, spend, how I spend money tells you everything you need to know about me. How someone spends money has a way of revealing their heart. They have a problem with lust. Then their spending habits will, will reflect that. If they have a problem with drugs, then, then that, that addiction, that the addiction is going to be reflected in how they spend their money. If I have an addiction to just having anything that adds no value to my life, then my, my spending habits will reflect that. Likewise, if I'm passionate about the things of God, then my spending habits will reflect that as well. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about um, uh, LeBron James and how LeBron James is just an awesome basketball player. And that on his team, LeBron James, no matter what team LeBron James is on, he produces for that team because LeBron James is, his, athletic, his athleticism is just beyond comparison to a lot of his fellow athletes. But I was told by uh, Pastor IBK that LeBron James spends a whole lot of money to just develop himself. In other words, LeBron James invests in himself to ensure that any time he hits that basketball court, he is producing. Likewise, as members of the body of Christ, whatever we are investing in reflects in our production. If we are investing in the word of God, 
And this is where, you know, this is where kind of where the rubber meets the road. If we are investing in building ourselves up spiritually, we will be able to produce a lot more. Why? Because we are, we are, we are investing in ourselves. Amen? Wherever we invest, the outcome is going to show. It is a reflection of where my heart is. If my heart is in the kingdom of God, I'm going to be investing in the kingdom of God. My spending habits is my investment. Whatever I spend my money on demonstrates what I am invested in. David was able, was invested in the kingdom or in the nation of Israel, but his theocentric attitude, his view towards God impacted how he managed Israel. He had a theocentric view. And so when he was, when he received things from God, David was able to acknowledge God. Even though he physically participated in those victories, he knew that it was all these things were coming from God. A theocentric view. What is, so, so how do I conclude? We must have a Christ-centric thinking when it comes to uh, what God has given us, when it comes to our accomplishments, when it comes to our wealth, so that we can now begin to first glorify God and then invest in the things that God would have us to invest in. Christ-centric thinking leads to Christ-centered habits. Christ-centered habits leads to Christ-centered giving, which accompanies Christ-centered spending, which again is rooted in knowing that all things belong to God. Let us pray. Father God, we just want to thank you right now. Just want to give you the honor and just give you the glory. Father God, we realize that as, 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 as your children, that you didn't just put us here on earth to just be aimless but that you have called us to invest in your kingdom. You have called us to invest in the things of God because we're not just living for ourselves, but we are, are placed here to impact the nations around the world. And even as our, our vision is to build strong families and serve the global community, you have called us, Father God, to reflect you. And so, Father God, we just thank you for giving us such an awesome privilege, for giving us such an awesome place, and giving us such an awesome perspective in which we would have a theocentric view, a God-centered view, a, a Christ-centered view on how we conduct ourselves, how we see our wealth and accomplishments, and how we spend our money, and how we manage the resources that you have given us. And so we thank you, Father God, and so we ask that you, will end, that you will show us how to be responsible citizens of your kingdom when it comes to how we spend, when it comes to what we invest in, and that we will always think of you first before we think about what we can do with what you have given us. Because just like David prayed, and just like he, he remembered throughout his, pray, his prayer that all things come from you, likewise, we want to have that same attitude. That even though we, we, we physically participated, all, we acknowledge that all things come from you. We want to have that same attitude. And Father God, we just ask that as you begin to show us and reveal to us who we are in our character, that we will daily, by, uh, moment by moment, day by day, be more, conf con uh, be more al aligned to your will, aligned to you, aligned to your character, that we will be conformed to the image of your Son in the way that we spend, and in the ways that we invest. And we just glorify you, God, because we know that there is a harvest that is coming that is going to come as a result of these teachings 
of people who are going to be impacted, who are people who have changed the ways or their attitudes towards money as a result of these teachings. And we thank you, Father God, and we look forward to receiving that harvest, to just be able to wave that offering and wave the harvest back to you, to glorify you, to give you the praise and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. And again, look forward to seeing you next week, Sunday, um, you know, to talk, to have our kingdom conversation. It's going to be an awesome time. Please tune in. God bless and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your evening.